Welcome back to another episode of Jillin' Off. Uh, I'm one of your Jillers, Christina Walkinshaw, with me as always. Jen Murphy. Jen Murphy. Jen, no um, more fingers, Murphy. Do you know how long it's been since I used my finger? Not at all. I'm so proud of you. I know. I can't even believe I ever used to do that. Oh my God. Do you know what? I, I don't even think I told you that I did this last week because I think I did this before our last podcast. But I was washing my vibrator and like afterwards, I threw it in the garbage. <laughs> like I didn't mean to, obviously. It was just like an absent minded thing where I think I was looking at something else on my counter that I did want to throw away. And I was like, I got to throw that away. And instead, I just like opened up my garbage. Like, is that, am I already getting Alzheimer's? Well, I just have one question. Did you wash it again or just use it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I did wash it again. Uh, more thoroughly than ever, actually. <laughs> I do stuff like that if I'm zoned out. Like if you have something heavy on your mind where like all of a sudden you're like putting uh, your soda away in the microwave or something random like that, you know? Yeah, it was definitely one of those absent-minded moments. There was something else on the counter that I did want to throw in the garbage. So I think I just had my eye on it. And then all of a sudden I opened the garbage and threw the vibrator in. And I was like, that is definitely not what I meant to do. I was taking a bath recently because I got really into baths and I put a candle on the ledge and then I also put a little cup with some wine and I was just like zoned out like and then I grabbed the candle and almost drank it. I've <laughs> definitely done that before and I'm pretty sure I've done that like in front of people where they really oh. there's a bar in Toronto called Squirrelies that would and hurt. for sure like because they always have the candles on the bar and it's a really dark bar I for surely picked up a candle and almost drank it. And also I did burn my scarf on one of the, their candles too. Oh no. That's like a, one of those cute divey bars that really shouldn't have candles. People no. get drunk enough in the motherland that we can't be trusted around open flames. Also, if you actually got it to your lips, like just that hot wax to your lips would fucking burn. So close. I kind of lit up when you said candle because I just bought a new candle from Trader Joe's. Oh, Maybe I should light it. It's me a too. Vanilla. Brand oh my new. God, we're so 40 something with our candles. Hold on. Brand new. Mine is eucalyptic, eucalyptus spearmint stress relief. Guys, we're lighting Roma candles. Aromatherapy stress relief. Um, Excuse me. Oh, that's good. Um, oh, shit. I just put two of them out when I was showing. Mine them. is, so this is from Trader Joe's. Yeah, vanilla pumpkin scented candle. Let's light it up. Let's make this, let's candle. This is our vigil for Norm Macdonald, who passed yes. away today. This is our vigil. I know you guys so will hear this sad. on Monday, just... but today's Tuesday, September 14th for us. Yes, yes. We like, you know, you guys know we like to uh, do our podcasts <laughs> six days before it comes out. That way you, yeah, you get sure all the news is old, old news. by the yeah. time you listen. This is why we're, we can't have, a, we definitely are not a topical. Um podcast yeah it was so sad that one just like like I can't even explain how I felt like I, it a we didn't see it coming because he kept his cancer a secret right so we never knew that he was sick and so yeah you never you never knew you know like not that I'm saying that there's a comparison by any means like when somebody dies they die it's sad but you know with Alex Trebek remember you was like sick and you're like oh no that's not yeah it's definitely different when you know they're sick. I mean, this was totally out of the blue. Was... Yeah. Oh. But I mean, awesome for him for being able to keep it a secret and not having to deal with paparazzi and shit. That's true. Yeah, that would be annoying. Yeah, he probably just didn't want those to be his last days. Did like, you ever meet Norm I... McDonald? I sure did. And I mean, I like I posted something like on Twitter and like my story on social media, but it didn't. If I had a picture with him, I probably would have posted it, but I don't. So I want to be like, I don't know. I get very awkward with with death in general. I really haven't experienced a lot of death. I know it sounds crazy, like as people I know. But when I met Norm Macdonald, and again, I didn't want to post this because I don't know. I just think it would be weird or disrespectful to be like, hey, here's a guy who said really nice things about me and to me. like. I don't know. He just came up to me. We were doing a show at the Improv. This is when I lived in LA the first time. And when I got off stage, he was like waiting to go on. He was like, hey, you're really funny. And then I saw him in like in the bar area at the Improv. And he comes up to me again. And he goes, no, no, no. But like, I really mean it. 
You're really funny. Oh, that's so awesome. It was the cute. It was so nice. And I was so like, I love him so much. Like, yeah, you know, like obviously I've been going down a rabbit hole of like watching old bits of his and stuff, but I really want to rewatch Dirty Work. Do you remember Dirty oh, Work? Oh, yeah. I don't think I've ever even seen that whole thing. Oh, my God. That movie's so underrated, and I loved it so I'm much. Write it that. Down. Oh, you got it. It's gold. It's That movie's gold, man. I had a really cool experience with him when I was, like, really new, like, three years in, probably. And I was at this bar in Hollywood that used to do shows where it was, like, nobody was there. It was one of those where it's mostly comedians and a couple people, but it was, like, a dark restaurant bar. Okay. And I guess he was sitting in the back with the another guy that's on TV. I don't remember his name. It doesn't matter. But we didn't know he was there. And like I did my set and he came over when they were leaving and he like touched my shoulder and he like leaned over and whispered into my ear. And he's like, you're really funny. He goes, don't drink, don't fuck, just write. And guess oh what? I listened to him and now I'm really successful because I took his advice. <laughs> <laughs> now all these years later i was like norm mcdonald gave me advice and i ignored it <laughs> oh my god it was so cool though because he just like whispered in my ear but honestly i was so dumb like that early on in comedy of course i was like oh that's norm mcdonald that's cool but i didn't know like now like wow like that was norm mcdonald <laughs> oh my god i know but it was so cool he's so nice obviously because he's, he's, he's so said nice. nice things to you also that's so nice i know we're two for two on like great norm mcdonald stories and i mean I truly that is great advice that i mean neither one of us have uh, uh, <laughs> taken that kind of advice but <laughs> he's he could, probably onto something but i know and i think about <laughs> I've thought about that advice several times over the years. I was like, I get it now what he was saying. <laughs> now I get it. Oh my God. Oh. At the time I was like, what do you mean? Just oh. be funny. <laughs> no. Well, all I can think of today is like Casey Corbett in Ottawa. He's a comic. So Norm started in Ottawa. Him and I started in the same comedy club, the Yuck Yucks Ottawa. So Norm was like one of these great success stories to come out of the club. And Casey Corbin is a comic friend of mine from Canada. He has been obsessed with Norm since day one. Like he almost kind of like has the cadence of him, like his delivery, like the sound, the way he talks and stuff, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's a form of flattery. Like he loves Norm. But all I could think about when he died was like, oh my God, how is Casey Corbin going to handle this death? Oh, it was like, no. And it is like, I mean, my whole feed is pictures of Norm right now, which is. Did you reach out to Casey Corbin? I haven't yet because I've just kind of been off my phone. I had to like put away my phone. I was like, it's too sad. I, I had to still, I mean, I saw a bunch of stuff pop up and it was my neighbor who actually texted me. You know, it's like a powerful death when somebody texts you as opposed to just like post something on social media. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because usually. Yeah, that's true. I found out from a text also. Yeah. So it's. Yeah, it's, which is a probably, I don't know, it's better, right? You're, so when people die, you shouldn't be like, oh, here, let's straight to the internet. I want to be the first to fucking spread the gossip, but it's like, or spread the news. It's almost, when you hear it in a text, it's like somebody, I don't know, we need to all talk to each other more <laughs> and not just do social media, right? Yeah. It's like, oh yeah. So I was, I was shocked though. I still don't even know, like, I still feel like I'm, I'm in shock. I can't believe it. Oh, I'm sorry for your shock. It's sad. It's That's just bummer. Like, it's just well, like we're getting to this age now where like all the people we really admire, not all the people, but more and more people that we really admire and came up with and grew up loving are like He's so dating. young. I mean, 61 is really 61 young. 61 is super young. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, I mean, I didn't read a ton of stuff, but I feel like any of the stuff I read that said he died of cancer, they never said what kind. I know. I think you're right. I I definitely read the when the CNN prompt came came up on my phone. I opened that, and I read all that. But you're right. It didn't say what kind. Yeah, that's interesting. Huh? Yikes! Yikes! Well, did you have any exciting things happen this weekend? 
I still feel like I've had like a crazy, a crazy week. Oh, really? In a good way or bad way? Um, well, I rolled my ankle, so bad way. Are you still injured? I feel like it's starting to feel better now. It just hurts if I try to like, like turn my ankle like this. Like I can't, I'm fine now walking on it, like putting pressure on it, but it's more like I can't, I don't know. I can't like shift it. Does that make sense? Like go like this. Like it kind of hurts if I was just trying to flex my ankle, like flex my foot. Have you been able to run? No, I'm just like, it's still a little tender. I don't want to make it upset if it's maybe too soon to run, even though I desperately want to run. Today I went to the track and I just looked at it. <laughs> like, so sad. I know. Like I literally went to the track with a coffee and my book. I finished my book and I just like looked at the track. I was like, oh God, I want to run. But I think I am just like when I start to run again, which I'm probably going to try tomorrow, I'm going to make sure I only run on the track because when I rolled the ankle, I was just on the waterfront on the pier, totally sober, by the way. I just had an ice cream. I was having a wholesome. Why does a person like me feel like when I injure myself, I have to like say if I was drunk or sober? Well, dude, I don't think I told you, but I freaking sprained my ankle so bad two weeks ago. It was like all purple and I did it totally sober. I fell downstairs so completely sober. And I'm like, it's clear that we're more used to being drunk than sober. (laughs) How many times have I been drunk walking on stairs since I've never fallen? <laughs> I know. But that's what our bodies are used to. And then we try to do things sober and our body's like, how do we walk? And then all of a sudden I'm falling. Like I almost oh. fell. It was one of those things where it was just like uneven wood on the boardwalk and my ankle just like, oh, and then it was like a, me flying through the air, almost bailing, like full blown, like face planting on the ground somehow caught myself but i really think it was in me trying to catch myself if i just fallen i don't think i would have twisted the ankle if i just hit the pavement and went boom but instead i tried to catch myself at all these weird angles and it probably took me five or six steps to catch my balance again uh, i think it was me trying to not totally face plant on the floor where i twisted the ankle uh, i think the initial the initial like piece of wood that I, I stepped on. I don't even think that was the moment where it happened. I think it was the moment where I finally caught myself and stood back up where it was like, oh shit. Cause, oh. Did you, when you stood back up, were you laughing? Like it's so embarrassing when you're in public and you just laugh, like have to, it even so if you're in pain, you just have right. to laugh at yourself. Everybody just looking at me like, <laughs> are you okay? I thought you were going to fall. And I was like, I did too. Also, and Mary immediately was like, do you want ibuprofen? Do you need Advil? And I was like, I don't even know. And then I was too embarrassed to say I was hurt. And I was like, I'm sure I'm fine. And then the rest of the night, my ankle was in so much pain. Oh, that sucks. I sat at, I went and met my brother-in-law at the, I don't know. If, is it a brother-in-law? If it's like my brother-in-law's brother, is that still a brother-in-law? Technically, I guess. I think so too. I don't know what to call him, but he's like family. So he just moved to New York, went to the Upper East. Also, I ran for the ferry so fucking fast that I got on the wrong ferry and I ended up at Wall Street. But that was a, it was that part was kind of nice actually. That ferry is way more exciting than the 34th Street. So they took an express train, met my brother in law, and then he had to go because he had a work function. And I stayed in that bar and like had a few more drinks and, you know, made some friends as I do. And I literally, I can't even tell you how much, even after a bunch of beer and like these pickleback shots that my new friends in their twenties were buying me, <laughs> it was still so much pain when I got in that chair. Like I, it was like, I don't know. The, the only way I can describe how I was walking is, do you remember that scene in Romy Michelle's high school reunion? It such where, a great movie. Oh my God. I love it. And uh, anyways, I believe it, which one's Mira Servino? Was she Romy or Michelle? Oh my She's God, Michelle. Romy. She's Romy, right? Yeah. I so I should know this. I know that movie up at heart. But you know, when she goes up to the guy in the nightclub and he's wearing a suit and she's like, oh, look at, you know, she's like, oh, I'm going to go hit on the guy in the suit. And she was like, that's a great suit you're wearing. Uh, what do you do for a living? And he goes, mm, thank you. I'm a suit salesman. <laughs> and she goes, ooh, would you excuse me for a moment? Uh, I got a blister in my foot a little earlier and then my shoe is filling up with blood. And then she like, 
hobbles away. I can only describe my walk on Friday night as the walk in that movie. I don't remember that exact scene, but that movie is so great. <laughs> so I was walk walking like Romy in Romy Michelle's high school reunion during that scene. So then Saturday was tender. I stayed in bed all day and just like watched TV and shit. But then I still went to my show, which of course was up a giant fire escape. Oh no. <laughs> so it's fine. And you now today it's, it's like- a, Did you get a little brace for your ankle? No, I don't think, it, I'm hoping it's not that, I don't think it's that bad. Like, I know, I don't think I sprained it. I just think I rolled it. Like I just- Yeah, that's what I did to mine, but it still was like purple on the bottom. Oh, I mean, definitely mine was swollen on, I'm wearing But I also right still now. could uh, exercise. It was it swollen needed. like right here. Wait, it's like right oh. here is where it's swollen. Cute shoes. Are you wearing slippers? Sure isn't, am. Isn't it still summer there? I don't know. There's so much goddamn air conditioning <laughs> in New York. I, I seem to always need layers. And my apartment is, I don't know. I get wow. cold feet too. Hmm. Maybe but it's anyways. just that it's like 90 degrees here and I saw your slippers and I was like, oh my God. I know. Hot I get flash. cold feet. It's, it's actually perfect out right now. I do like fall in New York so much. It's so just, we went outside and grilled like me and my neighbor tonight. And it was just like perfect out there right oh, now. Good. Yeah. I'm so glad. How about you? Anything exciting happened to you this week? No. I mean, I went to the Rams game. Oh, yeah. That's so good. That it's so awesome. funny because – oh, wait. <laughs> I think we already talked about this on another podcast. But then when, when I saw somebody post a picture with you and be like, ran into my BFF at the Rams game, and all I can think about is the video. We didn't talk about this because it just happened two days ago. Oh, no. But I'm just saying my reaction when I saw the photo of you guys together was me thinking oh. about the video. <laughs> Which I do know that we talked about the video, I'm pretty sure, on like two weeks ago. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The video. Oh, yeah. Oh, see, now you know why we're best friends. That will, exactly. It creates a bond. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, the Rams game was cool, but uh, yeah. Then, well, not such happy news. Then I woke up at, I got a call at 5 a.m. the next morning that my grandma died. Oh, no. Yeah, so. You know, oh, you sorry. have like a great night and then you wake up hungover and ugh. that is okay. I, I spent a lot of the time two days before that I spent a lot of time with her. Oh, that's good. So oh, that's good. That's so sad. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. It turns oh. out I gave her her last meal, which was like a pint of chocolate ice cream. Oh, <laughs> that's a pretty good last meal. That is an amazing last meal. <laughs> oh my God. Oh man. I <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to make you sad. No, I mean this is we we're already talking about Norm. We're, this is a RIP episode. This is tender times. I feel like the last like month and a half has been a lot of RIP. It has been. Like the guy from the wire too. And then obviously like the comedians all dying, the fentanyl overdose and like oh yeah, yeah, I feel it like has it been started a lot. with Tony Baker's son just yeah. tragic and then it was like a few weeks later then things just kept happening you're right it's maybe it's too... done now maybe yeah, it's that's... the tail end of covid it's just like oh and also there's these other <laughs> ways to die <laughs> that are still out there <laughs> in case you... <laughs> you want some uplifting news uh i don't i don't know <laughs> i don't know anybody that's died from covid but they seem to be uh getting hit with everything else for real whoa <laughs> Guys, I'm starting to think fentanyl is more dangerous than COVID. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. <laughs> we shouldn't be laughing about this. It's oh no, funny. we only laugh because it's just hard to talk about. Is it it's weird awkward. that right before the podcast, I had on um, my grandma's crest white strips that I took when I cleaned out her room? <laughs> I'm sure she'd love that <laughs> you got them. <laughs> My grandma, who's still with us, which I'm really fucking lucky and grateful for. Yeah, she's 99. But yeah, you should have seen when she was like getting rid of her house, like wow. sell your house. She's like, what do you want? You want the couch? It's like she's like still so coherent. It's like she's organizing the death. What do you want? You want that? Yeah, you can have it. Like, you know, like I really did want the old couch, though, in the old house. It's like so cute, like late 60s vibes, like yeah. blue, turquoise flowers, like very like it would 
it would be a vintage hit, but of course I couldn't get that all the way to Toronto. I was living in Toronto, I think when she got rid of the house. So uh, uh, I ended up just taking one pillow from it, but it's really cute. Turquoise is on my bed. I think it's so cool having stuff from grandma. Yeah. Like you said, and I also took her. Spoon oh yeah. And I also took her spoon collection. Cause when yeah. I think of grandma Wagachaw, I think of spoons. Like she always collected spoons. Anytime we traveled, I'm like, I'm going to get grandma a spoon. Uh, so I did take the spoons too, but my, I love the spoon collection in Vancouver. So it's like in my room in uh, my parents' house. You didn't even bring just one spoon. I should have just brought one spoon. Maybe I will on my next, maybe I'll slowly, when I actually really settle down, you know, you know, Jen, when I succeed and can afford a place, <laughs> you'll get all those spoons. Taking the spoons and they're the first thing that are going to go on my wall in the the apartment I eventually buy on the Upper West Side. <laughs> Maybe in honor of Norm Macdonald, we should finally take his advice. I'm just kidding. We shouldn't. <laughs> As I'm mid-gulp. <laughs> you were mid-gulp. <laughs> I was mid-gulp when Jen said that, you guys. <laughs> your face. I just saw your glass of wine. All of a sudden, your eyes got really big. Like... <laughs> Take his advice? Oh no. <laughs> Today I wasn't going to drink either. I know I've done a couple podcasts sober, but I was like, oh, I'm not going to drink today. And then I, I oh no. We, well, we grilled. I, I just got a couple like bottles of beer or whatever. And then, of course, I'm going to have a glass of wine on the podcast. But yeah. Oh, it was just too sad. Even though Norm didn't drink, right? Or at least he didn't in the last many years. So, like, I mean, he probably did at some point, but not. The last time I saw, when I saw him, I think it was even Rebecca Kohler posted something where he was drinking like club soda and like bitters. I don't think, yeah. Anyways. I think his vices were definitely gambling. Yeah. And maybe some, some fun drugs or something. Oh well, man. <laughs> I know sometimes when I see like the people addicted to cocaine, like, you know, going through all this, all this fentanyl and cocaine drama. And I think I, I might've said this last week. I was like, oh, maybe I should be grateful that I'm only an alcoholic. So, yeah. yeah. Dude, I went to a party on Saturday, the going away party for my BFF. Right. And there were some people doing coke. I'm like, oh, and we had just been talking about what happened with the comedians. I'm like, how did you possibly do that? And they're like, no, I know for sure it's pure. I'm like, even if I was certain, I don't think I could put anything to my nose a week after people <laughs> overdose. I'm 100% with you. I would have such a panic attack as soon as I did it. Same. I couldn't do it. I, I, I don't think I'll ever touch the stuff again. And I had a conversation yesterday because we, you know, we go for mug night on Mondays and there were two guys that were pretty, you know, very on it, blunt, you know, at a bar just saying, oh yeah, we do cocaine or, you know, like sometimes you gotta. And one guy who like works in a bar, he's like, I always have some in my pocket just in case like somebody needs some. And I was like, wow. Uh, and then I was like, I can't, I, you know, after all these comedians just died in LA, I can't, like, I just, I can't even imagine touching this stuff. If it was, if that didn't happen and you met that guy and he's like, I got some in my pocket. Do you think you'd be like, oh, a little bit? Sure. I mean, I still think I'm so many years without touching the stuff that no. Yeah. And the fentanyl thing's been a problem in Vancouver for a long time. Oh, that's true. You already knew about it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've fentanyl's already on my radar. Where it's like I don't want to mess with. You know, I do love life. Um, I get, I get such bad anxiety sometimes that even like people were saying, "Oh, you know, it's not just coke. They're putting it in everything, all drugs." And I even got so nervous that I was like, "Is it okay to eat the edible I have in my?" <laughs> 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 all of a sudden, I just freaked out. Like, <gasps> what if it was in edible? my edible? <laughs> Oh no. oh no. Now I'm like looking for my edible. I think I still have one back here. Oh yeah, I do. You just put the camera all the way down. Sorry, I had to I had to turn it I had to like put down my laptop screen a little bit to look behind it to see if the edible was still there. Edibles don't go bad, do they? Um on, I think only if you open the package and kind of leave it out. Okay. Like candy. Maybe I should do that tomorrow. Oh, no, tomorrow I have a show. Um, I'm like, I need a night off. Or I do, if I'm not drinking, I do enjoy an edible. Yeah, they're fun. Have you had it for yeah. a really long time? Yeah. Oh. I really don't do them very often. So when somebody gives them to me, I don't know. 
I don't yeah. even know how old that thing is. It's probably like at least it could be like six or eight months old. Yeah, I get it. I have like two joints like that because I don't smoke joints, but I got them for free and I should have just given them away, but I keep saving them like maybe I'll want to. <laughs> I never do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I think they do go bad after a little bit. They might get stale. Oopsies. Like you'll probably still get a high, but maybe it just gets it just like tastes weird or something. Guys, yeah. if you know how long it takes for pot to go stale, email us at jillinoffpod at gmail.com. Email us at jillinoffpod.com. Yes. Um, guess what I'm going to do on Friday? I think I already told you. I'm going to get my first haircut since COVID. Groupon? Better believe it. $74.95. I'm getting the highlights, a cut, and a style. For $74.95? Fucking, that's a deal, eh? Yeah, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet everybody can't wait to see it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I paid two hundred dollars for fucking bullshit haircuts. So, yeah, like, no. even if this is like, I don't even. I was like, <laughs> I don't give a shit. I was gonna get full head of highlights, but I don't have the patience. It's a long time. It's like it three takes hours. Too long, and I'm like, I'll do partials because I'm like, I, I just, I can't make small talk it's different when i'm you know in toronto and shannon is like my hairdresser and my friend and a comedian and we can literally gossip for like three hours getting my hair done like i'm golden up there but with a total stranger i can't i can't small talk and in that fucking i hate getting my hair cut just you just you gotta get a, a magazine from the waiting room that's what i do and then when you go to sit down you already have your you open it up right away like hey and then they know they know that you're gonna read and not want want to chat oh i should do that because i always i don't know yeah, you just got to give them the, the sign or bring your own book is even more telling them like, I'm going to read. I'm totally going to bring my books. I just finished a book today because, you know, I'm when I joined the library. Uh, but then when I returned my book today, the library wasn't open yet. So then whatever. I have tons of books at home. Like I that book man on Bedford, I get two for five dollars. He's amazing. But I'm also trying to like finish. I, I made a goal on Goodreads to read 25 books this year and nice. I'm way behind schedule. I think I'm only at like eight. Uh-oh, you better step it up. Yeah, so I got to, you know what, I'll bring my book because then. Yeah, and I'm sure yeah. they don't mind. They probably hate making all that small talk too. They probably do too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Talk about I'm... COVID and the weather. I know, right? It's, <laughs> nobody, wants to... nobody wants to talk to me. I know it. <laughs> I'm just most excited out of those three things, color, cut, and style. I'm really interested in style. Yeah, well, because when you say yeah. style, I think of like a blowout, like a big a blowout. Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, and then I have a show on Saturday out in Phil uh, not Philadelphia, just outside of Philadelphia. Um, I don't know. And then I feel like, well, so back in the day when Shannon used to do my hair, every single time after she did my hair, I would pick up or I would have sex or like something good always happened when she when she touched my scalp. Wow. So I don't know. It, I think it's a Shannon touch. I don't think it's a, a haircut thing. No, you so got no, another haircut. It's haircut thing. So you got to say haircut thing so that you'll have that same Ooh, energy I, going out. I like what you're saying. Your confidence is boosted. You're right. It is. And then you feel all good because you're like, oh, look at how fresh I look. So maybe on Sunday night, I'll go back to like where I always meet up with the firefighter. Yeah. Oh, my self confidence goes way up after I get my highlights. Yeah, you're right. Confidence. Yeah. So it's good. You're like, um, I look pretty good. Yes, 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 yes. Speaking so, of, I ran into my little 20 year old crush. Well, I don't have a crush on him, but he, I passed him on the street today. <laughs> now I'm so intrigued that I look right at him like, hi, how are you? And he's like, hi. I like the way <laughs> that you use the tone of a voice. It sounds like you're talking to a kid. Cause he is a kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You having a good day? Yeah? No, you're you cute. His little face is just so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I would never hook up with him, but now I'm just so intrigued as to why he's giving me those fuck me eyes. Uh, I love it. Oh, I don't even, I don't think I told you this. So whatever. I did a show at this like hipster spot in Bushwick, tiny cupboard. It's a rooftop. It's it actually is really cool. And uh so and this was like their like the main show stage. And then afterwards, I saw this 
a guy in the uh, where is he so he slipped in you know when you go into your message request box on instagram yeah you know what i mean the requests so yeah he had written me oh here he is so he wrote me after my show hey saw you at the rooftop show tonight we'd love to see you later for a nightcap oh and i was like okay cool and then uh I didn't respond because I didn't see the message till like the next day. Then at 12.51 a.m., he, write, he writes, okay, I'd like to finish my blow with you and on you. Like, again, we're going back to cocaine. <laughs> yeah, okay, but wait, that's kind of a random sentence, no? And then I wrote in the morning, lol, just seeing this now. And then he wrote, go figure, lol. And then he goes, Tell you what, show me more where you get a decent bite around here and I'll repay you with a good licking. Ugh. Okay, wow. well. There's, just, there's no easing into romance anymore, right? People just are like, hey, uh, do you need my tongue up your clit? <laughs> I... They should see themselves out. <laughs> I mean... I'm, I'm torn because that could be a turn off that it's so aggressive. But at the same time, at least you don't have to wonder if he likes going down on girl. At least you know it's a for sure. But I don't would call me prude, but I would be told I would not want somebody doing blow off of me. <laughs> oh, no, I know. We already had this conversation. <laughs> we already don't want to do blow right now. It's like, no, 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 that's not that's not our advice of choice. But also like women we need to we need to like you and then we want the sex we can't just be like hey i want somebody to go down on me and then you know what i mean we don't yeah we need to like you and then i'll get wet i don't get wet just like and then throw myself to the wind so you didn't respond no smart i like it hopefully he's gonna follow our podcast now and uh <laughs> i always put it in my intros now like when somebody's like, what do you want me to say about you? I go, oh, I have a podcast called Jill and Off with Jen Murphy. And, oh, nice. And I've done just for laughs and that's it. <laughs> but it's always good because then usually the host gets a little bit of a giggle of people who actually get Jill and Off. Yeah. So yeah, then the host great. gets a little, you know, we get a little chuckle in the intro. Yeah. There you go. I like it. Um. So, yeah, what else? I'm trying to think of, uh, well, let me... Let me refer to my notes. Um, I did. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, so I did go down, even though my ankle was kind of messed. I did take the subway and put myself right at One World Trade on 9-11. After I watched like five hours of 9-11 documentaries. And then I was like, I got to go down there just for like an hour or something before my show. That's sweet. Yeah. And then I stumbled upon this bar. I didn't drink because I was like, Ugh. I am old fashioned now where I'm actually doing stand up sober, but uh, I walked just like down this street that was, it was a bar, but it had, like, you know, it was more like a street party at this point. And it was all firefighters. Like it was, I literally like, I wanted to take an Instagram story because like every single girl would have gotten so wet, just like with a shot of this crowd, like oh, man. they're all dressed up. They're all having their beers. They're all bonding. Like, it was so sweet. And then this uh, one guy talked to me adorable. and he's like, what are, you doing? what are you doing? Like, and I was like, oh, I was like, yeah, maybe I'll stay and have a drink. Then I pretended to go get a drink. Then I left. But anyways, it was just like firefighters for fucking days. Just like next 9-11, that's where I'm going. I'm <laughs> but I'm turning a tragedy into my fucking wet fest. But <laughs> next 9-11. <laughs> Oh my God, there were so many firefighters. You know, I will say this because obviously I'm so grateful to live in New York. I love it here. 9 11 never scared me away from living in New York. Bed bugs did. Yeah. That's why when I got my papers, I was like, I'm scared. I don't want to go. I'm scared of bed bugs. Oof. And then I moved here, and turns out I thought the worst thing that would happen would be bed bugs. Turns out also mm. global pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you just never know. You took a big you never risk. Know. You never know. <laughs> it's okay. You're thriving now. No, I'm thriving. You got that uh, babysitting money. <coughs> oh, yeah. Oh, babysitting is hilarious. I am in my second coming of my babysitting career, you guys. Um, so if you don't follow us on Patreon, uh, <laughs> you can picture us hanging out with kids every day. <laughs> <laughs> 
They're so funny though. Like these kids are actually like, I'm really starting like, like I was starting to bond with them now. Like I even told them about Norm McDonald dying. Aww. They're like five and seven. And they're like, did he have, did he have fart jokes too? And I was like, I gotta think about that one for a minute. Cause I told them I have a fart joke. I have some fart jokes. <laughs> they really respect farting at that, that age, little boys. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my God. My then little they, like five year old. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no. I don't think I was going to say anything that exciting. But then there were all these, like, scooters. Sorry, I'll just get the scooter thing out. So I guess the mom likes it when they have the scooters because if they just walk, they're really slow. But if they're on the scooter, then I have to fucking sprint behind them, right? Because they're flying down the street. They're always on the sidewalk. But I'm like, oh, my God, they're going to, like, run over people. They better stop. I was like, you guys stop at every block. You don't cross the street without me. And they do. But it's just freaky. And then, like, everybody just sees me, like – running down the street and this woman was like you know new yorkers we just like shout things at each other right so this woman was like oh look at that poor mom has to run after them and i look at her and i go yeah fucking assholes <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's awesome she's in shock thinking i'm actually their mom saying fucking assholes <laughs> oh my god that's so great so what were you gonna say i love when People call kids assholes. I just think it's so funny. Oh, that lady had a hoot right there. But I mean, I, I could have been like, oh, maybe I'm not really their mom. I <laughs> say that. But. There's also something really fun about like responding to somebody as if you're their mom. I always mm -hmm. feel slightly guilty, but a lot of people will be like, oh, oh my yeah. God, he's so beautiful. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Well, just taking credit for other people's pretty children. <laughs> well, because I. I sometimes used to tell the truth and then there's just an awkward moment because they'll be like, he's so cute. And I'm like, yeah, he's not mine. And then there's just this weird, but they still complimented him. So I still feel like I should say thank you. <laughs> oh, totally. I mean, Anna and Mike, my good friends in Canada, like I wingman, like I kind of set them up. I took Anna as my date to Christine's wedding. Then Anna and Mike met. So I feel like I wingman that baby. So when Christine's like, Olivia is like literally the cutest. I'm like, I know. And I wingman that baby. Yeah. I might not have kids, but I'm going to brag about my associations to like the good ones. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You can totally take credit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I don't but yeah, they are, uh, they are really funny. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of another funny story. I feel my, like I had my five-year-old. Oh, yeah. Like this kid. Oh, sorry. What were you going to say? I was just going to say my five-year-old nephew when he found out that my grandma died. And then he said, his dad said that, uh, like his dad's trying to explain to him like, oh yeah, but you know, she was really old. She was almost a hundred. And he said that the kid was just like, a hundred? She goes, was she the first person ever born? <laughs> <laughs> How funny is that? Oh my God, it's so good. And like the, the only times he's seen my grandma, she's already been in her nineties. So she would always, you know, at any family party, she's sitting the whole time. Yeah. Oh so my then, God. So then he said that, that he asked him, is, is that why she had to sit all the time? Cause she, <laughs> oh my God. I love it. She was the first person like ever born. And she was... <laughs> this is like a literal, like kids say the darndest things. Like now I know, like, I know what happened to Jill and off. And it's a TV show. I know. Is I'm it obvious? Like and off all of a sudden, <laughs> we just start talking about kids now for every episode. <laughs> No, this just means that none of us have gotten any action. I know. That's true. When the kids have better stories than we do, you guys are in trouble as listeners. <laughs> like, Sorry. Like, here's one of the kids. So whatever, it was raining the other day, and we walked to, like, this woman's house, like, to have a play date. A play dates are good. It makes the day, like, fly by. So anyway, so I go, so they, the kids have their umbrellas, and they, but they open the umbrella inside. I go, oh, no, no, no. I was like, you shouldn't open the umbrella inside. It's bad luck. And then Leo was like, I don't believe in bad luck. And I was like, okay, sure. But then outside, do you know what he said? What? He goes, well, then is it bad luck to close an umbrella outside? That's so smart. I know. That's what I thought. I was like, that's a really smart comeback. <laughs> kids these days. Kids I think the name seven of, years old. The name of this podcast should be the kids edition or something or rated, rated the kids, G. The kids edition. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm ready to get down. Not meant for adults. <laughs> Kids say the darndest things. <laughs> uh, but, oh my God, they really are funny. Uh, yeah, so anyways. Uh, but it's easy. It's like, whatever. Right here in Williamsburg. 
that's it's funny just like yeah but it's easy like, like two third like so i mean i did long days the last few weeks but now i'm just picking them up from school i'm doing like a 2 30 to like kind of six o'clock thing oh that's easy it's actually really good because like it's good side hustle money mm-hmm. and then i still have my mornings to like do all my like chores writing not that i've been writing but uh running you know still get a lot of time by myself and 2 30 to 5 6 like it's kind of a part of the day that drags anyways Are yeah you fine? yeah and then you're finished like in time to go to a show if you have a show i can or exactly if, if not, i got a show in time shows are no problem hour? shows happy hour it's really not interfering with my life at all i just have to jill off a nap a little earlier <laughs> <laughs> you moved your jill off time up to 10 a.m yeah, i had to jill off at one o'clock today as opposed to three o'clock was it exciting for you on the very first football Sunday? Did you hang out in some sports bars? Yeah, so we went to Pine Box Rock Shop in, technically it's East Williamsburg, but I would call it Bushwick. Anything like that far, it's it's so hipster. But it's like my neighbor's favorite place to watch football. But it was so cheap. Like they do, they have a rotating tap that's $6 and then two for one, uh, ro- two for one drinks during the Seahawks games. Oh, wow. Nice. So, like, we had, I think we each had four beers. And yeah, our bill was like $24. Holy shit. That's Isn't that insane? Really good. Yeah. So, I was like, fuck. As much as I always feel like I don't fit in in Bushwick because I'm not hipster enough, I'm like, sign me up for these fucking deals. That's a great deal. Yeah. And the games were good. Like, I was actually watching the Seahawks. Well, I am just kind of accidentally invested in the Lions now because of Bubble Boy last year. Yeah. And then my neighbor's also from Michigan. So, you know, even though the Lions are a tragic team, but. Well, we got your quarterback and he did really good on Sunday. Oh, yay. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. The Rams got Stafford. That's right. Oh, my God. I love Stafford. Oh, anyways. What a. It's so funny because if I watched, like, I watched so much basketball this past year and, like, you can see the players, but. With football, it's so funny because I watch them and I can see a little bit of their face. And then sometimes you see him like in normal clothes and it's either like, holy shit, I didn't know he was that attractive. <laughs> oh my God, I know. Because like the football uniform is not real attractive. Stafford's and you definitely can't a see their face. Yeah. Sometimes it's Although such I feel a like shock. I, I think I already went to like, I don't know if I followed him on Instagram or I just like looked him up on Instagram, but obviously he's like married and I think his wife is like super like into jesus and stuff oh yeah anyways mm. not that i'm saying it's a turn off when a guy's super religious but i'll see myself sometimes. out sometimes <laughs> sometimes oh, shit. i just lit a paper towel on fire by accident oh, no. me and jenna are the only 40 year old women that like cannot be trusted around the candles that we so badly want to buy <laughs> i'm like jesus i got all nervous <laughs> is he watching us <laughs> I'm so scared. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I haven't heard from my dad in a while. Now I got paranoid. I'm like, did he see that video I posted where we talked about him setting me up on a date? Oh my god, it's so funny. And I was excited the joke's working. Yeah. Oh, and guess what? The same night I tried the Bible joke. When was that? Last Wednesday? I also I didn't even plan on doing it, but somehow I said something about being pregnant, and so I did the abortion where it, i'm so old oh I yeah how like now if we went in for an abortion they'd be like give it a week yeah and it worked oh that is that's fucking trust me that is gold i was <laughs> nervous that one's a little so this week i don't have like a brand new joke but i did think of another thing about my childhood that may, could possibly be tagged on to my dad like parallel parking or something all right yeah 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 only because it has to do with driving because my dad, I actually wrote this down a while ago and I've never done it, but when I was this a kid, my dad had like such road rage, but <laughs> he's also like passive aggressive in a way. So he, he would never actually like yell at people, but he would yell inside the car. And I just know my brother and I would be in the backseat like, but he would always be like, you turkey. But then he would pull out, he would actually put his finger into his side, like as if he had a holster, like put it into his side hip pull out the gun like (laughs) cock it and be like and then blow out the smoke like this oh like like he pretended he was shooting (laughs) 
I remember that move. <laughs> <laughs> Now as an adult, I'm like, it was a really a big act out for road rage. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I saw somebody make that move though. Like the the gun that <sighs> I know. I know I, I like, know the move. I can picture somebody doing it. I feel like the act out would only work if I had a really great like tag, you know, punchline to go after the because the act out is hilarious with the blowing the smoke, but Yeah. I don't know. I didn't really have anything this week. That's all I had. I was just like, mm, the only kind of tag that on. I, the only tag that I was working on was for, because my booty call joke is working really good right now. About like I'm how so late is too for a booty call? Is it the um, tattoo part? Um. Oh. Or which part is working really well? I don't oh, even the know. Coffee. If, did... if he wants coffee. Well, yeah, just like, you know, like if you, if you, I'm 40, I'm 40 years, like 42 years, years bleh, I'm 40 years old. Well, sometimes I say my real age, sometimes I say 40, 40 42. or 42. I'm either yeah, like I 41, say 40. 43, 45. I'm 42 years old. If you text me at 430 in the morning, I don't know if you want to fuck or you will need to ride to the airport. I'm like, does this guy want to go for a hike? Like, what's up? Like, you are not going to get good service at this hour. Have you ever gone to Denny's at 430 in the morning? <laughs> Nobody wants to do shit for you. <laughs> You can't even ask for ketchup without getting stink eye. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I like so the Denny's like part. Tagging that, but uh, but yeah, but I feel you, like the Denny's thing. You I mean, didn't I try just, the um, the comic book part. Um, I think I forgot about the. Uh, I think I forgot the tattoo part. I posted that joke. video, right? Because I made a video of you doing the. I posted it, right? Of you reading the yeah. comic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I think did. you did. I know I reposted it because that was yeah, that was funny. That was was funny. Oh man, it's so funny. I love that. Oh. It was hilarious. Now I'm like It's such a good visual. <laughs> and so true. So real. I feel like I have nobody that I'm excited about right now. I'm not pursuing I'm not pursuing anybody. I mean, you know me, I just have my basic roster. I know. That's it. I did get pretty drunk with my usual Boston uh, friend last week. Was that after our podcast? It must have been. I feel like we always go out on Wednesday nights. Yeah, I think he it was after Tuesday. you sent me a picture of him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, uh, we got oof, hammered Magoo for sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I think it's so funny that you always poop at his place. I'm not, I'm not surprised. We put so much death in our body every time we go out together. Like what? Oh, that makes Dirty. sense. Dirty draft beer, eating in strip clubs. I found oh, a piece okay. of nothing but pineapple and jalapeno on it in his neighborhood. Slam that. I'm not okay. surprised. That I'm taking I guess I'm dumps. not surprised. Yeah, and I like flew out of there in the morning. Oh, this is what I texted you, even though I didn't do it this time. Uh, so, but this is another good one to, to ask our listeners. Like, when you hook up with the guy, and we barely hook up, we're really more friends. Sometimes we just get drunk and sloppy and kiss, but like, when you hook up with a guy and he gets out of bed kind of before you, do you make the bed for him when you get out of bed? I forgot that we were going to do this. Yeah, you were like, write it down. And I sure did. Because uh, <laughs> you're right. I probably would have forgotten. <laughs> it's, it's do you funny. make the bed? I always make the bed for any guy that I, I sleep at their house. I don't unless it's like a boyfriend. Oh, the only time I do it if it's like kind of a one night stand is if like I left like a wet spot if he made me come and then I'll then I'll make it just to cover it up cover it like, up I've totally done that before. your bed is wet <laughs> what's that little spark of the Japanese flag on your sheets well we're just gonna make the bed because <laughs> you know that he doesn't know how wet it is because he made me sleep in it you ever have somebody who knows how wet like how wet you made the bed and they're like yeah you're definitely sleeping in that <laughs> that's so rude it is rude. Oh my god. Can you give me a towel? <laughs> Wait, sometimes we need a towel. <laughs> oh my god. I just sleep in it and then cover it up in the morning. Like, good luck. So funny. I mean, I'm not saying I do a good job making the bed, but I certainly do an effort. You know what I mean? That's very nice of you. I think so too. Because you don't even know. Like, I mean, I'm pretty sure half the guys I fuck don't actually make their bed. 
That's the That's first what... time their bed's been made. I know. It's. <laughs> they probably go at the end of the day. They go to go to sleep, and they're like, "How do I do this? How do also, the covers yeah. come down? <laughs> <laughs> what did she do to my bed? I know. What is this? Was my mom here? <laughs> With my mom. Also, if anybody has a life hack as to like how to get a duvet in a duvet cover, I need it because like, listen, I, I really like my laundromat here. Like I'm obsessed with the way it makes my clothes smell. And so I literally have washed my sheets more since I've lived here than I ever have my entire life. And we don't need to uh, go into further detail about that. But Sometimes I do like to ask people, like, how often do you wash your sheets? And let me tell you, I've never come anywhere close to what people are doing. But I love it here, but I fucking hate doing my duvet. Because I'll do the duvet cover. Doing the duvet is, like, I think it actually costs more at the laundromat because I, I do a drop and fold thing. But the cover I do, like, when I do my sheets. And it's so goddamn annoying to get the fucking duvet back in the duvet cover. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. I don't have or a Or you just have a comforter. I don't have a duvet, but I've seen one. But now that you're saying that, I'm thinking that when I lived in New York and had to go to the laundromat, I never brought my sheets. Yeah, that was I don't like me in Toronto. I've never <laughs> Toronto, that fucking laundromat. I, hey, I don't even think the laundromat was actually cleaning anything. First of all, I think we were putting it in a machine, feeding it quarters, and it would just come out after it had been soaked in some water or something. Like it never, it wasn't like how it is here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. I hated washing my sheets. A, it was like, I didn't have enough sets of sheets either to rotate. So then usually what would happen is I would do the sheets, grab my laundry, throw it in my room, go out, get hammered, and then come home and fucking pass out on a bare mattress like a crackhead. Oh, I know. I've done that. That's awful. Like straight out of Breaking Bad. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, just, uh, I can't make my bed now. I'm just going to sleep on this I mattress. Feel like the number one rule of the Jill and Off podcast is you only wash your sheets if cum gets on them. That is definitely, that's our golden rule, you guys. Like you if don't we have were to, to wash write, your sheets. At some point, somebody's going to approach us and be like, can you please write a Jill and Off book? And we'll be like, yeah. Chapter yeah. one, wash your, how often should you wash your sheets <laughs> if they get cum on them? Yeah, exactly. Especially if you have dark sheets. That shit yes. shows. I, I have like, I have one set of sheets. It's like navy blue, like straight out of Lewinsky story. <laughs> and it really does pop. <laughs> Number two rule, only use white sheets. <laughs> but unless you're on your period, because then you could have a Japanese flag situation. Oh, goodness. <laughs> There's no good color sheet. There's just not. Like, unless we, I don't know. Like, what do you do? Because if you get cum color, then you get period blood on it. If you get period color, you get cum color on it. God, our lives are so difficult. <laughs> Every other woman right now is like, I can't even listen to this pot. I'm, like, I I'm trying to raise children and you're literally <laughs> worried about the color of cum and period on your sheets. But do they make brown sheets for other know, problems? That's a great question. Just like the brown underwear. Oh my God. Skid mark on your sheets. Oh my God, skid mark sheets. <laughs> uh, so gross. Imagine white with brown polka dots. Do you think I should look for those sheets? Oh, it'd be so nasty if somebody stepped to your house and left a skid mark. <laughs> what about white sheets with, uh, yeah, with brown and red polka dots? Oh, that's a really good idea. <clears throat> yeah, well, let me put them on the market and see how well they sell. That's a great idea. I like it. <laughs> it's going to be a hit. Shark Tank. <clears throat> We're gonna sell that along with a Dark Tank. Oh along my God. with a tube of the uh Gina juice. Right. Oh wait, I still two more things on my notes that I wanted to talk about. Okay. Oh, wait, three, but one of them I don't it's really not that exciting anymore. But so I did have an interaction with a man on the street today. What kind of interaction? Like and a flirtation. Kind of oh, just a stranger? Yeah, I was just like standing on the corner waiting for the light to change. And he looks at me and he smiles. And yeah, I know, which is really exciting. Like people in Williamsburg, like especially on that snobby water front part, they don't smile. 
you know, like everybody like has a kind of face that says, I play the cello. Don't talk to me. <laughs> I play the cello. Like very serious. Like everybody, I don't know. Nobody really smells on that part of William, Williamsburg, but this guy like smiled at me. So I was kind of like shocked. I'm like, am I ovulating? What, why am I attracting this man on the street? Like, so then we walked to the next block and then the next red light, he finally like, just like smiles again. And then I, I think I smelled bigger the second time. And then he's like, he's like, Hey, I was like, hi. Cause I actually did not have headphones in, which also helps if you're trying to flirt with people, maybe don't shut yourself up from the world. But yeah. Um, so then he's like, uh, are you coming from the ferry? And I was like, Oh no, I'm coming from my friend's house friend <laughs> babysitting obviously <laughs> oh babysitting <laughs> and then he goes are you going anywhere exciting and then I was like no I'm just going home I was like how about you where are you going he's like I've been working from home all day like I uh I, I uh, going for a slice of pizza he said can't handle all work at home I gotta get out and I was like oh cool yeah yeah, yeah. and then he says where's your friend live and I was like 22 like oh, sorry, I shouldn't say people's address but like whatever like, you know I give the address and he goes I live there and then I was like, oh, straight up, I'm babysitting there. And those aren't my kids. Because <laughs> what if I see him? So wait, he lives in the same building? Yes. That's weird. So then I was like, oh, well, maybe I'll, I'll probably so see exciting. you. Around. Yeah, well, when he got my name and I gave, like, we got each other's names. And uh, now you have the chance of running into him. Can you imagine? I would love to have a booty call in that building. Just like, well, my neighbor was like, oh, so he's rich because this building is like, the kids have more amenities than I've ever had in my entire life. Like, that place really, is insane. I'm really it's, excited about this. Yeah. So we'll see if I have another run in with him. But uh, yeah, it was, no, it was this, fun. This makes babysitting so much more exciting because when I'm out playing with the kid, you know, I got a couple of people on my street, you know, like, I'm like, maybe I'll run into knife guy. Not yeah. bad to have some flirtations in the neighborhood. No, I know. Just a little eye candy. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I hope you see him. This is so exciting. Oh, my God. Yeah. So that's. I like it. It's just a little. It just makes the. Uh, it just makes the, the day a little exciting. We have a little flirtation. Yeah. I'm a huge fan. And then. I love, I love the innocent flirtations. Yeah. With have no you pressure. seen my, my bracelets, my blowjob hair ties that have been selling after the show? I did. They're so cute. Okay. So I did already do that. So I can cross that off the list. But uh, now it's just like I'm doing a to-do list where I'm like, okay, okay, okay. This is all I got. Uh, this is the last right. thing. It's already an, almost an hour. So you're good. I know. That flew by. And it was sad. I felt like a few hours ago, I felt like down. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be in a good mood to like... I, Dude, I almost podcast. canceled on you. I was like, I don't think I Did can do it. Did you feel it? Yeah, I felt it too. I was like, and I don't think I, I can do it tonight. <laughs> that's exactly what I felt. Now I feel so much better. Yay. We are each other's therapy. I know. Um, do you want to do one more topic or you can say This it? is it. I'm going to end with this because I already put it in my Instagram story. Oh. Uh, I don't know, a few days ago, but just so it's on the podcast for fun too. Uh, but like... Like I've gone from an age again. I, so I started watching that on the verge show, which I know I was excited about it in the first two episodes. And now I'm like very angry at it. Yeah, me too. Like now I'm like this, Hey, if we like smash the patriarchy as, as all the, as every, every woman wanted to, I don't know, in, in their late twenties, it's like, well, now there's literally every single woman on TV is like married with children. Like you don't have any examples of like girls like us that are like in their forties and single and childless. Like, and I'm reading tons of books that are the same thing where I'm like, there's literally like nobody with our voices out there anyways. Uh, so then on the verge, I was still excited about because there was some cool ageism stuff coming up that I really related to, but then it just got dumb. Anyways, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I realized when I was watching that show, I'm like, Oh yeah, I've gone from like an age where, um, where I used to be with like, guys who Dutch oven me to guys that actually own Dutch ovens. <laughs> Which is true. Bubble Boy had a Dutch oven. It just looks like a pot. Did you know that? Oh my <laughs> God. That at all. That's really funny. It's true. You, you should say that on stage. Yeah, maybe that's my new bit bit. Yeah, that's funny. New bit bit. Also, new. I started watching that show and I'm like, um, all these women are in their 50s. 
<clears throat> oh, what, the bird? That's like when I watched Valeria. I was just watching Valeria before we did the podcast. And I'm like, th- these girls are supposed to be in like their late 20s. And they have like more crow's feet than I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are they drinking in Madrid? Like, <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Sorry. Good one. Thanks. Well, I'm glad that we both pulled through and did an hour podcast, even though we both wanted to I can't bail. Even... We were both feeling the bail. The norm thing just really bummed me out. I can't explain it, but I was just like, Aww. Sorry. Oof. Yeah, no, it's that was a sad one. Um, that is sad. Um, anyways, all right. But so we will carry on. Power through. Guys, join our Patreon. Join our Patreon. I feel like I need to post some more tweets about our Patreon and try to get more people on board because, I, again, I always make these, like, to-do lists. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And the only day I'm productive is Monday. And then the rest of the week, I don't do anything. Oh, man. One out of seven. It's not really good odds. <laughs> How about the you make it this goal, your goal this week to do two out of seven? I know. I think you're right. No wonder I'm a 42-year-old babysitter. I don't try very hard. (laughs) (laughs) You and me both. (laughs) All right. Guys, until next week. Thank you for listening. Feel free to join our Patreon. I always put the link in the the description of the show, which I feel like I didn't even write last week. But I get so excited when I forget that I wrote it. And then I see, like, what you or Paul named the podcast. Did Paul name the podcast this week? I think I forgot because when I saw the title, I la- I always laugh whenever Paul gives it a title, by the way. Paul, I don't know. I should blow him up in the chat. When he names it, he he comes up yeah. with good ones, man. I'm telling you. Paul, Paul good ones. What was the name of the podcast this week? I, I, so I, one second, I didn't listen to it yet because I was binge listening. I hadn't listened to Christine's podcast in forever because for whatever reason, it stopped popping up on my phone. Which must have been a technical error on that. Oh, uh, it's called Difference in Tunnel Size. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he nailed it. Like, that's gold. <laughs> that's really funny. Oh, my God. Good job, Paul. Shout out to Paul. Shout out to Paul. Thank MVP Paul. <laughs> MVP of the week. Truly, though. And I saw, when I see that when I saw the title, I, like, died laughing. I was like, see? I never die uh, laughing at my own material, <laughs> only at Paul's. <laughs> so. That's funny. All right. Oh, until no, next I just week. accidentally started Orny's podcast. Ah! Right. Let's end this while you're listening to Orny's podcast. Uh oh. Okay, I'm going to hit stop recording. Okay. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye.